Yes, yes, welcome back to the Rat Cave. It's your boy Ratsy here for DJ Kit, and today I'm looking at the Hercules DJ Control Impulse T7. So, this new DJ controller has absolutely rocked everybody that's managed to have a go on it. Big up to Hercules, by the way. Uh, for sending me one ahead of the release. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but I don't normally actually talk about specific prices when I do these videos because I don't think it ages well for people that are perhaps watching this video in the future, the price might have changed or whatever. But I think that it's really important to start off this video by mentioning the price of this controller. And that is because this Hercules DJ Control Impulse T7 is 599 English sterling pounds. And that is an absolute steal. So when you compare that price of this Hercules T7 compared to the other controllers on the market that have got the moving platters, like the Rain 1, like the Pioneer DJ, uh, DDJ Rev 7, this T7 is half the price. I mean, this is actually one third of the price of the Pioneer DJ uh, Rev 7. However, the build of this T7 is definitely of a lower quality. There's a lot of plastic compared to the metal face plates and the metal build of like the Rain 1 and the Rev 7. Still, I want to say again, this controller here is £599. And if you forget about the moving platters and actually compare it to the other controllers that are around that price point, this is absolutely smashing it out of the park. So this DJ Control Impulse T7, uh, guys, I'm just gonna call it probably the Impulse T7 or the T7, because the name's pretty long to say every single time. But this uh, is built for Serato DJ Lite, Serato DJ Pro, and Hercules' very own DJ software, uh, Dejuiced. Now, it's worth saying that Dejuiced is completely free, as is Serato DJ Lite. This is compatible with Serato DJ Pro, but you do either have to already have the DJ Pro license or buy one. This isn't a hardware unlock for Serato DJ Pro. Now, what I was gonna do with this video is I was gonna actually use this with Serato DJ Lite because that is kind of what it is for, you know, that it, it's, it's promoted to work with Dejuiced and Serato DJ Lite. But for regular watchers of this YouTube channel will know how I say every single time how important it is and how much of a no-brainer it is for you to upgrade to Serato DJ Pro. So, I'm not going to use it with DJ Lite, I'm going to use it with DJ Pro so that you can see this controller at its full potential and it will hopefully give you the nudge to upgrade to Serato DJ Pro. So maybe down the line I might take this T7 for a little spin, pun intended, with um, Dejuiced software, but um, yeah, in today's video, I'm using this with Serato DJ Pro, um, and I'm not really gonna be talking about Dejuiced that much. So let's get straight into the best feature, the standout feature on this brand new DJ Control Impulse T7, and that is, of course, the spinning platters. Now, these are belt drive seven inch spinning platters, and to be honest with you, I got sent this, I played on it like I always do before I actually went through and read all the spec. I didn't realise that these were belt drive. They feel absolutely brilliant. Like, you, like, I know that when it comes to turntables, you know, belt drive turntables are the old classic. Oh, I learned on a pair of belt drives, mate. Congratulations, you should have got direct drive turntables. You know, never get 12 inch belt drive turntables to mix on. With 7 inch, it is a little bit more forgiving when it comes to the belt drive, but there's something about this T7, honestly, I didn't even notice the difference. So yeah, I am seriously impressed with the moving platters on this T7. Uh, when it comes to the vinyl, as I said, it's a 7 inch vinyl. You don't actually even have to use the vinyl that is supplied. You can use any 45 um, uh, record because it just clips onto the spindle. There's a little clip there. Uh, and actually, while I've got this record off, um, it is supplied with two uh, different slip mats. So one is slightly thicker than the other. Um, so, you know, it kind of depends on the feel of the, um, the, the platter that, that you want, whether you want a thick slip mat or a thin one, or even both. Um, but as well, of course, if you've got some seven inch um, slip mats, you can lob them on there as well with your own, you know, your favorite 45 record and you can use that with this T7. 
So to the right of the platters, you've got a full length uh, pitch fader here, which feels absolutely brilliant. It feels like good quality. Um, and it's got that click at 0%, which I am a massive fan of. So naturally you use the pitch fader to slow your tune um, or speed it up to, to mix the two tunes together. But a wicked touch on this T7 is that there is actually a pitch bend as well. So, um, you know, I, I think that this is really important when it comes to this um, controller with the moving platters, especially with the belt drive. I know I said that it, I didn't really notice that much, but when you're nudging the, your tune to get in time using the using the actual outside of the platter, it can get a little bit sloppy. So it's really nice that you've got the pitch bend, slow down your tune there, or speed it up there by holding that. By the way, the secondary controls of these two uh, pitch bend buttons down here, so when you press shift and, and these two buttons, they're the different uh, parameters for the pad modes, but we'll get onto that in a little bit. Now above the pitch uh, faders here, you've got the button to change the range of the, um, the, the pitch fader within the software. Uh, secondary is also a key lock on that. And then up here, you've got your sort of browser controls back, um, back and forth between the folders within the software. Um, hit that to add the tune into your prep. And then this big old knob here <laughs> is the browser knob. And then to load the tune, you just press it down and that loads the tune. Now, obviously you've got the same over here. Yeah, There's not one shared browser knob with two different load buttons. It's laid out really great. There's no confusion in, uh, in, in, in that instance. So yeah, really, really good. That gets a thumbs up from me. So then real quick one down here in the bottom left-hand corners, uh, this is where your Q and your play buttons are. Now it is worth saying these are not made out of rubber. They're clicky buttons, but they are super responsive. So, you know, that's not a big deal for me. And guys, these are the little things, yeah? Like, you know, the clicky buttons and that kind of stuff. These are the things why I thought it was important to mention the price of this at the start and the fact that this is sort of, I, I mean, I guess it is an intermediate price controller really, but you know, you for the price that this is, you wouldn't expect necessarily to have rubber playing Q buttons because this isn't the top end flagship controller. This is £599 and I'm going to keep on saying it. So then above the, the play and the cue buttons are the shift and the sync buttons there. And to the right of uh, them, these are your performance pads. So let's get into the performance pads on this T7 now. The pads themselves, they feel really good. Now they actually are made out of rubber um, and they feel and look pretty similar to the Hercules Impulse 500 when they came out. You've got the full um, RGB colors in there. I mean, they're not the brightest in the world to be fair, but you know, they are, they feel really good to hit um, and, and to play with, to finger drum and all that jazz. So there's eight different pad modes when you're using this T7 uh, with Serato DJ Pro with all eight pads being used within the pad modes, but only the first four pad modes when using this with Serato DJ Lite. And the bottom pads actually turn into some like transport controls where you can wind the tune back and forward. Uh, so that's in Serato DJ Lite. Once again, to remind you to upgrade to Serato DJ Pro, absolute no brainer people. So anyway, the, the first four primary pad modes on this T7, um, hot cue is number one, we all know how that works. The second one is a, uh, a loop. So you've got the different sizes of, of the loops here, which you can uh, pull in and out by, uh, by hitting those buttons. But the great thing about this T7 is there is the loop pad mode, but also to the right of the performance pads here, you've actually got another loop section where you've got an auto loop here with this knob here. So um, for instance, that's a, 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 an, a, an eighth, then you've got a, a one, you know, you turn this knob around here to change the, um, the size of the loop, then you press it to drop it in and drop it out. Then actually underneath there, you've got in and out uh, manual loop buttons as well. And then if you hit shift, then that does a four beat loop. Uh, the, the in button does a, does a four beat loop straight away, which actually I'm a big fan of. Um, uh, that's actually one of my go-tos when I'm DJing on controllers anyway. So back to the pad modes now. Pad mode number three is stems. Now again, stems is another thing which absolutely took the DJ world by storm. 
I don't know one Serato DJ who has played on stems that isn't absolutely <laughs> obsessed with it. Um, so yeah, the, the, the pad modes turn into the stems uh, here. So you've got vocal, melody, bass, and drums. By hitting them, you can remove them or isolate them or whatever. And then with Serato DJ Pro, you get the stems effects. So for example, hitting that echoes out the vocal instead of just immediately taking it out. But similar to the looping um, section on this T7, not only do you have the stems pads here, but to the right, you've got dedicated stems buttons on this T7, which uh, you hit that button there, you've got uh, straight away an instrumental of the song, and you hit that button there, you've got straight away just the acapella. So yeah, this is a feature that other companies, other DJ controllers were boasting to be, you know, the high-end stuff like the Rain 4, like the, the DDJ FLX10. Dedicated stems buttons, I feel like we're gonna be seeing a lot of that even on the 599 pound controllers going forward into the future. And finally, the last primary pad mode or the, uh, the fourth pad mode is the sampler. So the volume from the sampler actually comes through the volume fader of the um, whichever channel you're dropping the sample on. Now the secondary pad modes, as I mentioned before, these aren't available in Serato DJ Lite, but you um, activate them by hitting shift and uh, the, the, the pad modes along here. So mode number five on Serato DJ Pro, this is the pitch play. Uh, the second one is the, that's a loop roll. The third one along, this is your saved loop section. And then the fourth one along, this is the uh, scratch bank. So, you know, for those instant um, samples, uh, whether, whether they be instrumentals or whatever, they, you can activate them um, straight away, load them, um, whichever hot cue you want them from. I mean, it's a really, really great feature, especially for open format DJs. And if you're loading this T7 up with scratch samples, you know, it goes hand in hand with the moving platters. Now then, let's go over to the mixer section. Now this T7 is a two channel controller. There's no layers to it, so you can't sort of, you know, hit, hit a button and activate channels three and four. It is just two channel with a two channel mixer. Starting at the top, you've got the gain knob here with three band EQ, high, mid, and low, and then the filter knob underneath. So, you know, this is pretty standard, pretty typical. Then this section here, this is the effects section. Now, worth saying at this point, all of these effects are software effects. There's no built-in effects to this um, Hercules T7. Um, everything is within either Serato or Deduced, whichever software you're using this with. Once again, little nudge towards Serato DJ Pro. You get so many more effects when you uh, upgrade to uh, Serato DJ Pro compared to DJ Lite. But the same goes actually for the filter. So this is a software filter. Um, all of the effects, including the filter, completely software based. And actually, weirdly, the effects buttons here are one, two, three, one, two, three. But within Serato, when you're using this, all of these are actually, so even if I'm on, if I activate number one over here, I can actually play, I can use that effect over here, even though it's, um, one, two, three over here, it sort of confuses you. And that is because when you're using this with uh, deduced, it's one, two, three, one, two, three. So only these three buttons here activate effects on this channel and only these buttons here activate effects on that channel. Whereas on Serato, all six of them, it should be one to six really. Um, and you can of course activate all six at once. If you hit the paddles up, don't do it. It sounds absolutely awful. I've been playing around with, with trying to do different combos of that for years. I've never found one. But yeah, so that's how you activate the effects with these paddles, which I absolutely love. That's actually my preferred way to work these days in a sort of battle mixer layout. So I'm a big fan of this. Um, but um, so if I activate effect number one, which is an echo in Serato, if I hit this paddle up, then it holds. As you can see, all post fader and actually uh, post cross fader as well, which is a really, really wicked, uh, wicked feature. But yeah, so 
um, holding the pad, uh, flicking the paddle up that holds it so your effect is constant, or you can do a momentary, which, as you can see, if you just want to quickly hit the effect in, then you just uh, you push it down and then it flicks back up again. So then in the middle uh, of the effect section here, that's where the beat parameters are. So that's where you can, for instance, with this echo, you can make the echo, the beats bigger or smaller. But also this is the, uh, the depth, which is basically that's how much of the effect you want uh, to be applied to your tune. So, so the more that it's over this way, the longer that echo would have gone on, and the more it's over this way, the shorter the echo would have been. Okay, underneath the effects section, you see this little button here that's uh, the beat match guide. Now, Hercules, this is on a lot of Hercules DJ controllers, at least nearly all of the new ones. It's a really, really good feature for beginner DJs. Big up to Hercules for this feature. Um, what it basically does is it helps you learn how to beat match. So as you can see here, um, there's a red arrow. Um, I, the two tunes that I've got loaded at the moment, um, this one is um, slower than this one. So what the red arrow is telling me here is to slow either, either slow this one down or the red arrow here is on the speed up section. So um, if I get them to the same speed. So um, let's go all the way down on this one. I'll tell you what, I'll speed this one up actually. Um, if I just move this down, there we go. So if you hit the sweet spot there, you can see that this tempo light turns um, green. What that means is that the two tunes are now at the same BPM, so they'll be good to mix in with each other. Um, and actually, when you're using this um, as well, Cheers. You can see here that the, there's actually another beta line uh, section here with the two arrows. So what that does, the arrows up in here are speed up or slow down. These little arrows here that light up, they're to tell you to, to nudge the tune to get the actual beats in time with each other. So an example of that then, let's just drop this. And then I've got this tune here. So I know that they're both in time. They're both at the same BPM because the tempo buttons are green. But Oh, okay, so I've actually just dropped that in on the one, and so the beta line has turned green. But if they were out of time, can you see here, this um, is telling me to uh, nudge it to get it in time. There you go, see, so now, I mean, you know, the vocals are completely clashing, but as you can see, um, the tempo is green, the beta line is green, so these two tunes, according to Serato and according to this T7, are perfectly in time to mix together. Now, before everybody starts hopping on the, you know, that's cheating and blah -de blah and everyone can be a DJ, I want to say my bit about this. I think that this is a brilliant feature. It's not as easy as just pressing the sync button for beginner DJs, you know, they can Beginner DJs, it's so easy to skip the whole beat match learning um, because of the sync button. So I think that this is a really, really cool feature to have. Big up to Hercules, but if you don't want this, if you don't want these buttons to light up or anything, you just press this beat match guide button here and it takes it off anyway. So before you start complaining about it, turn it off. Little note though, actually, even if you've got this beat match guide turned off and these um, little arrows don't light up, the... Um, the LED around the browser knob up here pulses to the BPM of the tune and actually it turns red on the first, um, on, on, on the one beat of the bar. So, red, red. See, see what I mean? So, um, that happens on both sides. It's good to, to, to have that, you know, but unfortunately you can't turn that off if you want to. Worth saying as well in Deduced, I think that that's got something to do with the, um, like the feel of, of the tune. So fast tunes turn a certain color, slow tunes uh, turn a different color, so you can sort of mix together similar kind of vibes. So then moving down, let's talk about the faders on this Impulse T7. Now, this is a bit of a weird one, and it's a little bit of a shame, because 
There aren't any sort of special faders um, built into this. There's no mag faders or inner fader um, or anything like that. And unfortunately, these faders are actually soldered in to the controller itself. So it's pretty hard to like put an inner fader in there, for example, at the moment. Um, why is this a shame? Because spinning platters, of course, attract scratch DJs. What do Scratch DJs do? They hammer the crossfader. You know, some of them hammer the up faders, but it's mostly the crossfader. Now, these faders, they're not terrible, but they're not ideal. If you are, I mean, a bad workman blames his tools, so, you know, a good Scratch DJ should be able to scratch on anything, you could argue. Um, but if you are really, really serious, and you're a big man scratcher, you're a big time scratching DJ, you probably, uh, you might end up breaking the crossfader. I don't know. Um, but yeah, little bit of a shame, but guys, again, I keep saying it, this is 599 pound, man. So you can't expect everything. These faders are at that 599 pound price point, right? Anyway, there are three different um, uh, crossfader adjusts here. You've got like a blend one, you've got more of a cutty one, and then you've got a through one there which completely cuts up the fader. And remember as well, you can actually change the crossfader curve in the DJ software as well. So in case you hadn't noticed as well, this uh, Impulse T7 has got these fold out legs, the old DJ controller stilts that we first saw on the Impulse 500. Uh, these are a really, really welcome feature on this as it can make all the difference on your back if you're mixing on this for a long time. And actually, I just want to say as a side note, I need to raise my table in the rat cave here. It's been on my list of things to do for ages, but I think actually quite a few people have said in the, in the video comments section about how low this is. I completely agree with you guys. My back is shot away anyway from 18 years of DJing. But anyway, I digress. It's great to have these stilts, these legs on here, not only to sort of raise it up, you don't even have to have them on the leg. If the table's too high, take the legs off and put it flat. But the great thing about these legs is I said this about the 500, um, if a drink gets spilt, you've got this at a party, a drink gets spilt on the table, you know, it's, it's going to go underneath, it's like takes it away from, from the spillage and also it raises it up so that you can actually, it slots really nicely, a, um, a laptop stand slots really nicely underneath. So let's talk ins and outs on this T7 now. There's two master outs, one is an XLR and the other one is an RCA. There's no booth out on this T7 unfortunately, but at this price point, you know, maybe you wouldn't really expect it. The inputs on this T7 are pretty minimal as well. There's one mic input which doesn't have any EQ, only a volume knob um, up the top here. And it's a quarter inch jack rather than an XLR or XLR combi, which we see on quite a lot of other controllers. And actually, speaking of the microphone, the microphone on this T7 isn't actually rooted to go and play through the software it goes straight out of the master out of the controller. So what that means, we've seen it quite a lot recently with um, Serato controllers. Since lockdown, since streaming um, became massively popular, if you're using a microphone with this controller um, and you wanna live stream or you wanna record your mix and you want the microphone to be in that recording or in your live stream, you need to come out of uh, the master out into an interface and then into whichever laptop is uh, you're using for streaming or recording. So there are two headphone inputs. One is a quarter inch jack and the other one is a 3.5 millimeter. And the headphone controls are here. You've got the headphone volume and the Q or mix knob. So if it's over here, then you are listening to everything which is in the two Q buttons down here. Uh, and the master Q is up here. So then if you're with that knob all the way over here, then the only thing that you're listening to is what is coming out of the uh, master. Back to the back again, there's only one USB input on the T7 and it's USB-B. I actually found this quite surprising. We've seen quite a lot of USB-C being used on recent controllers by other manufacturers thinking, you know, well, sort of gambling that that is the future. I believe that USB-C is the future. It means that 
you know, I mean, it's it's not the end of the world because with with this, I've got this into a USB-C adapter into my MacBook here. Uh, but of course, you know, you can just buy a USB-B to USB-C cable. It's not the end of the world, but it, yeah, it did surprise me a little bit. So yeah, only one USB input does mean that you can only have one laptop plugged into this T7 at a time, which means you know you don't have that switch at the top that we see on a lot of controllers that have got two USBs where you switch from USB A or laptop A to laptop B, which is a touch for back to backs. None of that on this, only built for one laptop at a time. And there are no other inputs uh, or options to plug in turntables or media players on this T7. It is 100% software only, as I mentioned earlier about the effects and the mixer, you know, not being a standalone mixer. I mean, there's not even actually an AUX input on this T7, which again, I do find a bit strange because the Impulse 500, which is half the price of this, that's got an, uh, an AUX in on it. And actually that's got microphone EQ on it as well. So, I mean, I'd like to know where that sort of came from. Perhaps Hercules were just trying to keep this as minimal as possible and just concentrating on the more kind of battle DJ and those brilliant moving platters. Finally, let's talk power. So this T7, unfortunately, it does take a power brick. Um, regular watchers know that I'm not a fan of the old power brick. I think it's, they're hard to replace if they break or, you know, if you, God forbid, forget it when you get to the club or get to the gig or the party, wherever you're taking this control and you've left it at home, it's a lot easier to find an IEC cable, you know, to, to plug into your controller if you've lost it. This T7 isn't bus powered. Like it's obviously you use a USB to plug it into the laptop to DJ with, but that USB isn't enough to power it, like the power from the laptop. That's not surprising because of the moving platters. You can imagine that they take up quite a bit of energy and one single USB cable out of a, out of a laptop isn't enough power to, uh, to, to keep them spinning. But to be honest, I would happily take a brick um, and have the spinning platters than have this controller to be non-spinning platters and have it be USB bus powered. Anyway, let's conclude this Hercules DJ Control Impulse T7. Now, to go back to what I said at the start, 599 quid, there is absolutely no comparison with this against the Rain 1 or the Rev 7. Sure, they've got moving platters, you know, but they are flagships in their range. Whereas this, is £599, it is so reasonable. This controller is perfect for someone who maybe used to have a pair of turntables, sold them, right? The amount of times I've heard that, you know, used to have a pair of Technics, had to sell them because of the kids, because of this and that. You know, if you want something reasonable, you want to move into the digital world because you perhaps don't have all of your vinyl and stuff anymore, but you love that, moving platter feel, you know, you're used to the vinyl feel, this T7 is ideal. It's so reasonable, it works with Serato and Dejuiced. Serato DJ Lite is free. It's a great stepping stone from having turntables and being a vinyl DJ into the digital world, but on a budget. Also, if you are a pure beginner DJ who has wants to get into DJing but wants to learn, you know, how to do it the old school way or, or the traditional way of mixing vinyl, this is a great controller for you as well. Not only because it's reasonably priced, not only because it's got spinning platters, but because of that beat match guide. You know, as I said, that really, that's in between mixing by ear and pressing the sync button. It's a good, happy medium to learn how to DJ. This T7 is lightweight, it's really portable, it sounds great, it's loads of fun. Someone, coming from someone who is a vinyl DJ and who started off on vinyl like I am, the, the platters, like I said, to, without repeating myself, I didn't even realize that they were belt drive because they feel absolutely
Like, honestly, guys, you've got to have a go on one yourself. So, look, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know in the comments what you think of this T7. Vinyl DJs, is this something that you would consider as maybe a little bit of fun or a backup to take to a party rather than lugging around your techniques or whatever? Again, don't really want to compare this too much to the higher end Rain 1 or the Pioneer DJ Rev 7. But guys, you know, this is the brilliant budget version of that kind of sector of DJ controllers. Anyway, gang, as always, don't forget to like the video, share it to anyone who you think might find it interesting, and don't forget to subscribe to the DJ Kit YouTube channel for so many more videos like this of me yabbering on. Look, until next time, you take care out there. Peace.